Just what in the awesomeness is going on here? Planetary Stacking and SETI S Suite Pro. Let's check it out. Welcome to SETI Astro. As always, if you haven't gotten the newest release yet, head over to SETIastro.com under Astro Program SETI S Suite Pro. You can get uh, the download here, which is on the GitHub. There's a mirror site for Windows, a different mirror site for all other OSs. And then for those a little more tech savvy, you could just pip install SETI S Suite Pro or just fetch it from GitHub and, and run it straight from the source code. Now there's a couple new features in uh, version 1.7. Specifically, we're gonna cover planetary and surface uh, stacking today. So you can find it, uh, it's a new little tool button. It's, uh, it's Jupiter with like a, a grid on it. You could also find it under star stuff, planetary stacker. Okay, when you first open the planetary stacker, you're gonna get a viewer. Now you could open your files from here so you could view them. There's uh, options for the preview, an ROI crop, the stacking type. So let's get into all that. Let's do a Jupiter, a moon, and do some stuff with the sun. So the very first, in, or the first one I wanna show you is Jupiter. And I wanna show you that this is really not that great of data. Um, the seeing is extremely bad. There's dropped frames, so there's like splits, uh, horizontal splits you could see. There's just not a stable frame in this whole thing. And right now we're tracking planetary and that's what that little crosshair is. It's uh, tracking the centroid of our blobby, messy Jupiter here. You could do things like a shift and drag if you just want to do a cropped in ROI. You could uncheck use ROI. And I'm just gonna do the, I'm, I'm just gonna do planetary and just click open stacker. Now in the stacker, you're gonna have some stacking settings. It carried over that it, we're doing planetary tracking. This isn't a surface. We'll talk about surfaces with the moon. There are drizzle settings, and this is a this is a real drizzle. So there's a pix frac, which is the same as drop shrink. There's gonna be a kernel type, and there is um Quite a bit more computation like it's, it's a real drizzle i'm using the same code that's actually in my stacking suite for the drizzling now when can drizzle help you if you're undersampled like if you're trying to shoot a planet or something at f10 is probably a time you want to do some drizzling if you're at f20 no drizzle is not going to help you or if seeing is really bad like in this case this jupiter is just a big blobby mess moving all over drizzling is not going to help at all under analyze, there's going to be the minimum brightness that it's going to put any alignment points. You could choose how to build your reference frame, whether you're going to use the best frame or a small stack of, let's say, the, the top 10 best frames. In my experience, you're really not going to see much difference in either one of these. Your alignment points scale, either a single scale or it could do a multi-scale where it's going to do 2x, 1x, and half x of your alignment point size. You have your alignment point size is defaulted to 64 and spacing is 48 so that way you get an overlap. There's a checkbox here that says SSD refine. This is uh, the refinement phase of the alignment and SSD is the sum of the squares of the differences. And what it does is the same thing as if you took two images and you kind of shift it one on top of the other and you subtracted them you're gonna be left with a bunch of weird squiggle lines where the overlap didn't quite match up. And what it's going to do is it's gonna move that second image around until it gets the minimum brightness for the whole image where, where they're almost the best on top of each other. It does this pretty smartly as it will do first a, a little movement in a circle kind of around, find the direction that it had the best improvement and keep marching in that direction until it keeps improving, improving, improving until it doesn't get any more improvement. And that's how it's gonna do that refinement. If your seeing is really, really bad or your tracking is really, really bad, this SSD brute force, instead of just following where it was getting better, it's literally gonna check every single shift, left, right, up, down, around and around and around into a 10 pixel radius of moving that image on top of the other one, brute force every single combination until it finds the best one. And you're gonna notice there's some numbers. It says number one, analyze, number two, edit alignment points, number three, stack now. 
That's the order you got to do it in. So I'm going to click Analyze. And it's going to mention the quality of all our images first. And for planetary stacking, it can jump right into the refinement phase because it has that nice blobby centroid that it did the course alignment to. When we do the moon, you're going to see that's, that's not the case. Okay, and now we get a nice quality graph here. Higher is better, lower is worst, and it's rearranged from best to worst. You can click in here, and that's going to be your keep line. I recommend keeping at least 100 images if your data allows it. We're well above the, the median and the mean, so no, no problem here. If you click Edit Alignment Points, it's going to show you all the alignment points. You can change the size. You can click More Alignment Points. You could right click to delete alignment points. You can clear them. You can adjust. Maybe you want a bunch of smaller alignment, 32 or 16. Um, just make sure you adjust the spacing then to accommodate all those extra points and that you get sufficient overlap. That's ridiculous. I wouldn't recommend doing that at all. The defaults by far and away just work. So I almost never go into this edited alignment point screen, but it's, it's there. You could pop it open, double check it. If you click OK from here and you've changed alignment points, it's going to have to redo the alignment because it's actually aligning all those alignment point boxes as best as it possibly can based on the seeing condition. So if you do change the alignment points, it will have to go, go through and redo the alignment phase. Like I'm just going to add this extra point here and click OK. And you can see it's hopping right back into the uh, refinement phase to now realign those points because they've changed. So they're as good as they possibly can be now that you've changed them. But I'm going to tell you right now, you almost never have to go into that edit alignment point thing. I almost always go from analyze straight to stack now. So I'm going to click stack now. And stacking is normally pretty darn fast and it's done. So let's go ahead and look at our Jupiter. Now you're going to see Jupiter is quite fuzzy. Um, that's because the seeing condition was terrible. <laughs> and th this is what we got. But we're going to work some magic right now. Open up multi-scale decomposition. And when you saw my video on this, you were probably like, man, this kind of looks familiar. It's kind of what Registax and WaveSharp has, except this is much more sophisticated. Um, Jupiter is really blurry. So I'm going to give us more layers to work with. And you're going to see at, at and at a scale of one pixel, there's no additional detail in Jupiter. It's, it's just all blurry. So I'm just going to drop down to the layer three here, which is a pixel radius of four. And watch, I'm going to start bumping this up. And you can start seeing detail coming through now. That's, that's, that's just, it's just amazing. And sometimes it is a little better to do a couple iterations of doing this, especially in really blurry data like this Jupiter. So I'm going to say apply to document. And I'm just going to open up multi-scale decomposition again. Give us plenty of layers to work with if you so choose. And again, on the four scale, I'm bringing up until we start seeing a little bit of noise. If you do start seeing noise, you could adjust the threshold in this amount here. And that's going to only sharpen the things that actually have more detail. And then maybe we want to bump up layer eight a little bit. And even, even layer 16 a little bit, sure and apply to document. Now look look at all this detail in Jupiter. It's just it's just amazing this this does it like that. I'm going to make a quick duplicate so we can uh, do a before and after. So here's before and there's after. Just look at the amount of detail that, that you can get out of this. Before and after. Now let's go ahead and do a surface stacking, uh, something like the moon. So I'm going to just open, I'm going to go ahead and open uh, an image of the moon. This time we want to change stacking from tracking from planetary to surface, and it's going to say you need a, a surface anchor. 
So you need to control shift and click and drag. You want to have a surface feature that it could actually lock onto. So a bunch of craters, bright spots, um, bright spots near the Terminator, things like that. What you don't want to do is try to anchor into bland nothingness of Samara or something like that. So I'm going to click Open Stacker next. And it's, it's all the same stuff. I'm just going to click Analyze. Now, surface tracking is more difficult. It's going to do the same quality estimates, but then it's going to do phase correlations in order to do the course tracking on the surface of the moon to, to course align those. And then it's going to jump in again to the sum of squared differences to really get it locked in. It doesn't have a centroid like it does on the planet. So expect surface tracking to take longer, but the way I have my algorithm implemented here, it is really precise to get everything lined up as best possible for your surface, including the seeing conditions. All right, the quality analysis and alignment is done. Again, I'm just gonna leave everything on defaults and I'm gonna click stack now. And the stacking just, it just goes fast. And the stack is done. So now let's go ahead and look at this lunar surface. And again, let's let's work some magic. I'm going to open up multi-scale decomposition. And this is really clean data. So I'll, right on layer one, I'm just going to crank it up. And <laughs> it's just it's just amazing. I can go all the way up on this. There's no no noise in here. If there if you do see a little bit of noise, you can work the denoise or the threshold but my multi-scale decomposition tool is just really good about not amplifying noise and maybe we want to even bump up a little on the layer three just for some additional contrast in there not much just a touch i want to say apply to document now let's let's zoom in and we can do it before and after again here's before and after it's just, it's amazing the stuff it actually pulls out before, after, even over here by the, the Terminator, before, and after. Just look at all that cratering stuff. Multi-scale decomposition just does amazing work with uh, Planetary Stacker. Next one I'm going to show you is on the sun. This was during the last eclipse. Um, and this is a this is going to be a really cool one and I'm going to show you a, a trick if you've never seen it So again, I'm just going to open the stacker. I'm going to leave it on planetary. I'm going to click analyze And again, I'm just not going to touch anything. I want to say stack now And here's our solar stack and again, let's let's go ahead and work some magic I'm going to open up multi-scale decomposition and let's go ahead and bump up this layer and you can see right away how much detail you get so let me turn it back down and then if you just crank it up look it just it's just it comes out of nowhere and maybe we'll give a little bump on two and a tinier one on three and heck even even a tiny bit on four that's that's fine and now you can just see how it how it just pulls data out i want to say apply to document but with the sun, we're going to want to colorize this thing. So you can go up to edit, convert mono to RGB. And now this is an RGB image. Now we could actually do some really cool stuff with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is invert it. I'm going to go control I. Now that inverted the image for us. Now I'm going to go ahead and open curves. And you're going to think I'm crazy, but, but just follow along with me. I'm going to put just a point up over here. And then I'm going to take the white point and drag it all the way down. You're probably like, what the heck are you doing to your image? Just, just keep following along. I'm now going to bring down the, the sun in the center. And now you can see we have an inverted solar disk. And all the prominences are now uh, the right side up. So we were able to do just a, a very quick way to do an inverted solar disk and uh, get our prominences the uh, the correct way and introduce some contrast into the sun itself so i'm going to apply to document and now we have this cool inverted 
solar image with the prominences and everything. But now let's colorize it. If you've never colorized just with curves, it's super easy. Uh, I'm just going to take the green and bring it down a little bit. And then uh, I want to take the blue and bring that down just a ton. And now we're starting to get like a like a yellow colored sun. And now I'm going to take the red and just bring up the red here. And maybe we want even just a little bit of an S in the red. And maybe even a little bit of an S in the in the green too, just to make the limb a little bit kind of brighter than, than the core. Yeah, we'll, we'll just apply that. And, and now look at this. Now our sun is colorized in a really cool solar flux look. All our prominences are nice and prominent on the on the outside and it just it just has a really awesome look to it that I mean just that fast in Zedia Suite Pro here maybe just one more to show you uh, different file types so this is a bunch of uh, PNG files so if I just load in all those you can see it just loads in all the PNG files and even with a bunch of PNGs, here's our stack. This is a white light image of the sun. See a little sunspot right there. And again, we can pull open multi-scale decomposition. Look at how much detail you could start getting that fast just with that, that first layer. And even if you do something like layer four, you're going to start seeing some of the broader features now get um, amplified in the sun. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it like that. I'm gonna say apply to document. And again, you could you could colorize this. And uh, a white light version of the sun, maybe, I don't know. What are you guys thinking? A, a little bit of a, a cool blue. And now here's a, a nice white light image of the sun uh, during the eclipse. Well, I hope you guys get a lot of cool uses out of the Planetary and Surface Stacker. Utilizing the multi-scale decomposition to really sharpen all your details. And if you've never seen how to colorize a mono image, well, now you know how to do that too. Please comment, like, and subscribe.